All right, what we're going to do today is we are going to look at sketching polynomial functions. We're just going to create a rough sketch of this polynomial function. All right, so um, my, the example I'm going to work out for you today is f of x equals negative 3x squared times the quantity x minus 4 to the third times the quantity x plus 2. All right, now, as if you notice, this particular polynomial function is already in factored form which is going to ultimately make our job a little bit easier when we go to finding the roots. All right, now, to be able to sketch a polynomial function, you really do need a lot of background information. You've got to know how to find end behavior, and that entails looking at the degree and the leading coefficient. You've got to be able to find the roots of this polynomial function, and you've got to know a little bit about multiplicity. All right, all of which, as I go through each of the steps, it'll be a nice little review of those concepts. All right, so step one. I'm going to break this down into three easy steps before we attempt to sketch it. All right, step one, I am going to take a look at my end behavior. In order to look at end behavior, I need to look at my degree. All right, and if you recall how to find the degree of a factored polynomial, you come over here and you look at each of the exponents and you add them up and then you also have to realize there's the imaginary one on that one right there. So I'm going to be adding 2 plus 3 plus 1 that's going to give me a degree of 6. All right. Basically what that tells me is since it's an even degree it's going to look like probably either right side up or upside down parabola because it's an even exponent and then there's going to be many hills and valleys in there that I, I will predict at a later point in time. Okay. I also need to look at my leading coefficient. My leading coefficient is negative 3. All right, so now I've got an even better picture. Not only do I know it's going to kind of look like a parabola, but it's going to definitely be upside down. So that means my end behavior is going to be down, down. So I have my determined my end behavior. Okay, now on step 2, we need to take a look at this and find our roots. And this is where this one's a little bit easier than some of the others. I'm already in factored form, so I don't have to worry about factoring. I just can instantly go to finding my roots. I'm going to take this polynomial function. I'm going to set it equal to 0. So 0 equals negative 3x squared times the quantity x minus 4 to the third times the quantity x plus 2. All right, in factored form, all I have to do to find the roots is set each one of these equal to 0. So I'm going to set negative 3x squared equal to 0. Divide both sides by negative 3, take the square root, x equals 0. Uh, on the middle term, I'm going to set x minus 4 to the third power equal to 0. I would cube root both sides. That's going to get rid of the 3 right there. Cube root of 0 is still just 0. I can add 4 to both sides then. x equals 4. And when I set the last one equal to 0, x plus 2 equals 0. That's just going to give me x equals negative 2. All right, so these are my roots of my equation, I know when I go to sketch this that the function is going to cross the x-intercept at these three numbers. All right, so I am going to like emphasize this. The, the, this is kind of crucial when we go to the sketching part. All right, now step three, I'm going to need to take a look at the multiplicity. Okay, so step three, multiplicity. Okay, now if you recall where you find your multiplicity at, it's how many times those roots occur. All right, this has an exponent of 2, so that means that for my root x equals 0, I have a multiplicity of 2, and that would be an even multiplicity. For my root at x equals 4, my multiplicity is how many times that occurs, so my multiplicity is 3. That turns out to be an odd multiplicity. For my last root, x equals negative 2. There's the imaginary one that's sitting right there. So my multiplicity for my x equals negative 2 root is a multiplicity of 1. And again, that turns out to be an odd multiplicity. All right, now what you've got to remember about your multiplicity is that the fact that whether it's even or odd tells you what your graph's going to do. All right, when it is an even multiplicity, it tells me that the graph is going to bounce off the x-axis. When it is an odd multiplicity, it tells me that it's going to cross the x-axis, 
So since this one is also odd, I'm going, I know I'm going to cross the x-axis right there. All right, so that's my other set of crucial, crucial information right there, so I'm going to highlight that. Those are the two main things that I need to do, look at when I'm sketching. All right, now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do a really rough sketch of what this looks like. All right, first thing I'm going to do, all right, I know I have roots at 0, 4, and negative 2, so I'm going to put those on my graph. All right, there's negative 2. I know I have a root, so I know I cross there. I have a root at x equals 0. I'm going to put that there. I know I have a root at x equals 4. 3, 4, that's 4. There we go, I've got a root there. All right, now, I also know that I have end behavior that is down, down. Okay, so I'm going to put that on my graph. I'm going to do it in red just so we kind of see it's standing out there. Okay, so there's my down, down. I know I have down, down. All right, now, the thing is, you don't want to just go left to right across here, all right, because that's going to screw you up. You really have to pay attention. Okay, my root at x equals negative 2 has to cross, okay? So I know I have to come from this direction. I'm going to come up here. I know I need to cross right there at negative 2. All right, my next root is 0, which is right here, and it's telling me I have to bounce. All right, now, I don't know how high. I'm going to go up and just do a rough sketch, but obviously I've got to go up come back down so that I can bounce right there at x equals 0. All right, now, last root is at x equals 4, and it, my multiplicity tells me I have to cross. All right, well, so the only way to cross to get coming back down here, I've got to come up here. I don't know how high. I'm just going to do a rough sketch. Cross there at x equals 4, and then I'm going to come down, and I will have my end-to-end -end behavior. So we do see the general shape of, oh, that kind of looks like a parabola, and it's got hills and valleys in here. Now, this rough sketch does not indicate, I don't know how high I have to go here. I don't know, you know, there's lots of things I don't know. I am just getting a really rough sketch. All right, now, what I did do, just for comparison's sake, I did put this in the graphing calculator. All right, so we'll look at it like this first, and then I'll do some zooming in here. All right, in the graphing calculator, here's my different windows. I put the equation in. I did have to mess a lot with my viewing window and then my function. Okay, so... We do. We've got our down-down behavior, all right? We couldn't, obviously, in my sketch, I did not know how high it was going to go, and I didn't get this at all. I, you know, you can't get, you know, on a rough sketch, you're not going to see something like that, okay? Now, let's zoom in just a little bit here. What I have here is the zoomed-in um, polynomial function so that we can look at it real clearly. Um, I, when I ent originally entered the function into the graphing calculator, I did not get anything even close to this. Um, it was a really jagged, horrible looking picture. So then what I had to do is I had to go to the table of values. And then I had to, you know, scroll up and down and look. I really wanted to see what it was doing at zero. We knew zero, zero. All right, but then like at negative one, it's all the way up to 375. Okay, and then you come down here at two, it was up to 385. All right, so I, I played around with the numbers several times, but finally made a decision to go with a Y max of 800, well above those peaks, because I wanted to have room up there at the top of the graph to see. All right, I definitely wanted to be below the Y axis, so I set that at a minus 200, because I wanted the end behavior to show. And then it, when you pick a Y max as high as something like 800 or something, you're going to need to change that scale so that there's not like tons of little hash marks going up there. I changed my scale to about 20. All right, and then uh, left to right, I knew that I didn't have anything, you know, past negative 2. I knew I didn't have anything, you know, much past 4. So I just ran it from, like, negative 5 to 6. But it, you playing with your viewing window so that you can actually see what these polynomial functions look like um, will work. And then you can test to see, well, did you really do a rough sketch accurately?